And shot. And he will shoot and score. Gaines goes over to Warren. Watch the score. Shot. Oh, what a tremendous glove save. Hello and welcome, sports fans, to Mercier's College, home of the Lakers. I'm John Baranowski, and with me, as always, is David Stearns. Dave, what do you think of tonight's game? Well, I think tonight's game is going to be a true testament in whether or not the Lakers can have some consistency with their game. Yesterday, we saw a great performance by Adam Faulkner in net, and he only saw what, less than 40 shots, and he only allowed three goals. But this time, it looks like Coach McKinnon is going to give Bobby Williams a start to strut his stuff. But with a 7-3 win yesterday, will the Lakers get over their heads and allow the Panthers to split? We're not sure here yet. The attitude is still the same from yesterday. Play hockey. Don't get your head up in the clouds from yesterday's game. And it should be very interesting. Yesterday, there was a very physical game. And I'm expecting the same thing tonight. And also, we saw the Panthers take an early 1-0 lead with a minute and a half into the game. But two minutes later, David Gaines, the great rookie that has shown that he has a lot of talent, put the Lakers on the board, and from there, the Lakers got the ball rolling. But John, let me ask you, what did you think about the physical game yesterday? We saw some great hits coming from Whitney Gibbs and Matt Warren. What do you think is going to be out there tonight as far as the powerhouse hitters? Well, yesterday, the Lakers obviously were trying to send a message. They wanted to get physical and show this team that they mean business. Going into today's game, that should carry over some. Hopefully, on the Lakers' part, the Panthers will be a, a little more frightened, a little more off their game, worrying about these big hits coming. Whether or not that's true or whether the Panthers rise up to the challenge and fight back is going to be the question we see tonight. And also, the Panthers have some very strong offense coming from two particular guys, and that was Wes Bowman, who scored the first goal for the Panthers. I, what do you think about Wes Bowman's performance yesterday and Bobby Connor, well, getting that power play goal and also being pretty much the quarterback on that power play. If they get as many opportunities as they do tonight, I mean, yesterday the Lakers had 28 minutes in penalties, where the Panthers only had 12. And they had two five-on-three opportunities, the Panthers did, on the Lakers. Do you think the same kind of discipline is going to go the same way, or do you think the Lakers are going to play some smart defensive-style hockey instead of taking, like, stupid penalties? A lot of hooking calls. What do you think? Well, hopefully Coach McKinnon has really sat these players down and said, okay, guys, play your game, but play a fair game. Don't get caught in the penalty box. Nobody wants that. It doesn't help the team no matter what when you're playing down a man. What the, the, Bauman reminds me a lot of Stan Makita. The guy has a lot of talent, a lot of talent, a lot of great moves, but he's not on the best of teams, and therefore he's going to shine more than usual. What we have to do here with Bobby Connor is make sure we isolate him and keep him from quarterbacking the play as well as he wants to. What, with him out of the picture, this team's easily going to fall apart. That's, that's definitely true. I mean, the, uh, the penalty kill for the Lakers was definitely doing a lot of pressuring and a lot of slow play with the puck as far as clearing the zone, taking a lot more time to make decisions. And when those decisions came by, those defensemen were right there at the blue line to stop that puck and keep the power play going for these Panthers. So let's just hope that special teams doesn't really have a show tonight like it did last night because that pretty much dictated most of the game. It really did. With how much uh, special teams play there was last night, you really have to worry about that. Now let's look at the goaltending situations. Yesterday, uh, the, the goalie Wilkerson was pulled after letting in five goals. That was midway through the second. Who do you think that uh, the Panthers are going to go with today? Well, Wilkerson let in five goals on 20 shots, and the backup goaltender, he only let in, what, two shots on four, or two goals on 14 shots. And uh, in my mind, uh, it's Lothar. Yes, Kevin Lothar's getting, possibly getting the start tonight, considering he had a stronger play in the second half of the game. But... Maybe they're going to put in their third string goalie. We're not exactly sure yet at this point. And as for the Lakers, Adam Faulkner is not playing tonight, correct? Correct. They're going to give Bobby Williams a start to get his feet wet and see how he can contribute to the team. Considering Bobby is not really used to playing too many games for the Lakers because of Adam Faulkner's strong play, maybe this will give him an opportunity to show that he can contend for a starting position on that roster. It's always good to give a little bit of pressure to your starting goaltender, keep him going. All right, I think that's it. We'll return right after this. Hello, welcome back. I'm John Baranowski, and with me is David Stearns. At the drop of the puck, Central Penn Panthers will win the first faceoff. They dump it into the zone, played by goalie Bobby Williams. Lakers will recover. Panthers with it now. 
Shot by number four, Alex King. We have names today, folks, for number five and number or four. So don't worry. We know who they are. <laughs> that we do. Mystery men no longer. Azroff with the puck. He dumps it back in as it went out of, out of the uh, Mercier's zone. Lakers dump it in. We'll have one change. And they will score. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> some very interesting play there. Tic-tac-toe right in the net. There we go. Lothar letting in one, 19-21 in the first period. Wow, fast start. Tables have turned since yesterday. Yesterday, Panthers got on the board first, minute and a half in. Lakers do it faster this time, 39 seconds in. And with it is number nine, Stefanski. He clears it behind the net. Taken now by the Panthers. By number 17, Kenny Hunt. Assist to number four, Ben Odell. That's Hunt from Odell. Time of the goal, 1921. That quick shot by Derek Spittler. Good save by Bobby Williams. He will have a face off to his left. That face off won by the Panthers. They will shoot it quickly, and Williams will cover again. Interesting choice in music tonight. Obviously, they reached into my collection this time. That could be a bad thing. Not many people are here tonight. <laughs> Panthers will win the draw once again. They will take a quick shot, and it will go over the glove side pad of Bobby Williams, and they will tie it up quickly. Quick shot that caught him low, down low, and uh, definitely the work alongside of the net definitely paid off this time for the Panthers. So quick, quick retort there, less than a minute. Just a minute and six seconds into the game, we already have two goals. One by each team to make it 1-1. Face off at center ice. One by the Lakers. Taken by Henry. Over to Carr. Carr pushes it up, goes to Gibbs. Gibbs will dump it in, played by Lothar. Lothar will send it around the boards, picked up by Spittler. Lakers have it again, going back and forth with it. They will dump it in past the blue line. But I believe that's ruled, no, never mind. Spittler with it now. I'm sorry, that's Shackleton. Shackleton goes over to Spittler, who tries to shoot, but he runs into a host of Lakers. 14, Derek Spittler. Assist number 16, Wesley Heinel. And assist to number 24, Dylan Blank. That's Spittler from Heinel and Blank. Time of the goal, 18.54. Sherrod plays it back. Dumped in again by the Lakers. Picked up by Gaines. With it now is Gaines. The rookie scored two goals yesterday. Over to Warren, whose shot is wide. And it will go out of the zone, chased by number 13, Gramza. Yeah, Warren's got one heck of a shot there, but he's just got to learn how to get it right on target there. If he gets it on net, it's definitely dangerous enough for some rebounds to definitely give the Lakers a lot of opportunities. Sheriff to Peterson. He looks, goes around the horn to be picked up by the Panthers. Warren will get it back. It's in his feet. Tries to go center. No, it's intercepted by Alex King. With it now is 23 Bobby Connor, who shoots, and he will score. Five hole on Bobby Williams. Like I said yesterday about Connor, he's really smart and he played that one definitely right. He saw the five hole opening there that Bobby Williams pretty much welcomed him in right there at the crease. So now the Panthers got a lead this time for the first time in the game, two to one. Let's see how uh, the Lakers react here. If you recall in yesterday's game, which was replayed on Tuesday, the Lakers were down one nothing early in this contest and then rallied the win 7-3 over this same Central Penn Panther team. Those Panthers will win the faceoff. Azroff over to Spittler. Connor with it. He drives in, passes it inside to Bob. To, uh, sorry. It's Bauman. Lakers with it now. Panthers goal scored by number 23, Bobby Connor. Assist to number 15. That's Connor from number 15. Time of the goal, 17 19. Warren with the puck. He looks for the open man, finds it in Odell. Odell hit it a little bit by number 11, which is Buzkowski. 
Taken now by Ryan Dolan. Mercier will regain possession. Kenny Hunt dumps around the board over towards Gary Peterson. Chris Martin with it. Looks like we got another mystery man. We don't know who this number 15 is, so we'll have to get you that name. This time we will. Always a mystery man. Chris Martin with it in his own zone deep. He looks and tries to go to Pat Leone, but it'll go past him and it'll go all the way in to the Panther zone. Chase quickly by Stepanian. He will lose the puck and it'll go to Central Penn Panthers. Cleared over the high glass. Speaking of bringing Sexy back, I tell you, the stick handling by this Panthers team is definitely one of their strong points, and it's definitely an attractive thing that will bring them more opportunities throughout this entire game. Definitely helps if they can win the faceoffs, too. That way they can actually use their stick handling to their advantage. With it now, are the Central Penn Panthers driving quickly in a two-on-one. A shot will be taken by Spittler. There's a huge whistle as someone went hard into the boards. We will find out who momentarily. I believe that's Wesley Heinel. Yeah, Mike Miranda, very physical player. He's definitely taking a lot of bodies you know, on the hits there. But uh, from what I understand, he has an elbow problem right now, so he might be seeing some limited ice time. He must have banged up his elbow. He was telling me that a skate did it, so I'm not exactly sure what is wrong. Heinel definitely looking a little shaken up, and there will be a penalty called. it will be two minutes for hooking. And it looks like, looks like Miranda will come off. Mike Miranda will serve two minutes for hooking. Mercy Earth penalty to number eight, Mike Miranda, two minutes for hooking. Miranda, two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, 15.35. Lakers will play shorthanded once again. They seem to be quite used to this. We have Gaines with it. And David and uh, West Whitney Gibbs will go hard into the net, which is now off its moorings. And Mike Miranda's got to play a lot more uh, disciplined hockey. Yesterday he took four minutes and penalties out of the 28 that the Lakers accumulated. And a couple of those penalties came early on in the game, which really hurt the Lakers. Made them look really shaky in the first period, but he can smarten up his game. He'd definitely be one of the standout defensemen for this team. A lot of rookies, and he's one of them, and I think that he could definitely improve his game if he's played more disciplined hockey. Kenny Hunt to take the face off for the Lakers. He won't win it. Taken by the Central Penn Panthers. Over now to Bauman. Spittler. Spittler tries to corral the puck as he's roughed up by Kenny Hunt. Now taken by 23, Connor. Garner looks, leaves the puck behind the net for Azroff. Azroff up, pass incomplete, and that'll be dumped in by the Mercerous Lakers. Taken now by Azroff. He pushes it up to Fetter. I'm sorry, that's Fayok. Lakers will dump it in. Kenny Hunt chasing. Azroff will win that foot race, though. Looks like the Panthers are having a hard time setting up the power play today. They're getting caught in their own zone there, and a strong penalty kill here by the Lakers definitely holding them up quite a bit. And it looks like they're going to go five on three again. Connor was definitely rubbed right into those boards Matt Warren. by Matt Warren. It looks like he will go off. He's definitely not happy about that call, and I'm sure neither is the coaching staff. 53 seconds remaining on the first Mercier's penalty. They will be five on three for 53 seconds. Some dangerous opportunities here. Earlier on in yesterday's game in the first period, there was a five-on-three opportunity for the Panthers as well. Let's see if they'll capitalize here. Gibbs tries to clear the puck. He won't do so. Mercier's penalty to number 26, Matt Warren. Two minutes for hooking. Warren, two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, 14-29. Cordero to Bruskowski. He'll shoot, and it's saved by Williams. 1.45 left on the second penalty. 38 seconds on the five on three. 14-13 remaining in this first period of play. 2-1 Lakers. Oh, I'm sorry, 2-1 Panthers. Wishful thinking, I suppose. Yeah, right. <laughs> they could definitely use a lead right now. 
Puskowski jumps it, dumps it in to Allen. Allen looks. Puskowski calling for it, as is Blank, but he will take it to the other side. Blank with it now. He looks, pressured by the Lakers. Goes over to Puskowski. He'll make the quick shot. Williams will make a pad save. But it's not enough as the rebound is put in. 3-1 early in the first period. That five on three definitely hurt the Lakers as Mike Miranda rejoins his team on the ice. Yeah, definitely. I knew that five on three didn't look so good. Bobby Williams just kind of kicked out a rebound there. Instead of covering it up, he fumbled it a little bit, it looked like, and the Panthers just grabbed on and got themselves a power play goal. Lakers will take the face off down a man. They'll be taken by Pat Leone. Leone versus Derek Spittler. Leone will win, goes back to Odell, who can't clear the puck as it hits off Fayok, but he will do it on the second try. Now taken by the Panthers. 1-12 remaining in this penalty. 13-36 remaining in the period. Spittler with it, driving up center ice. He looks roughed up by Camlin. Panthers with it now, returning around the net. And Williams will let in another goal. Panthers goal scored by number 17, Devin Spittler. Assistant number 16, Wesley Heinel. And assistant number 11, Jake Bruskowski. At Spittler from Heinel and Bruskowski, a power play goal at 13.50. That was the previous goal. We'll get the call on this goal coming up shortly. Lakers are down quickly, four to one. Believe that, believe that was another power play goal there. There's still plenty of time left on that other minor, so two power play goals early on in the first period, not looking good for the Mercier's Lakers. That's exactly it. Lakers definitely need to play a little more discipline here. Warren with it. His pass goes to no one but the Panthers, who will dump it in. They, they can definitely taste blood. Shot saved by Williams. Quick shot from the corner. Lakers try to clear out, but it's kept in by Blank. Blank with it again. He finds it in his feet. As he clears it back in, it hits his own player and goes off sides. I think the Lakers definitely got lucky on that call. They really did need that. Lakers will take their face off now with a full roster on the ice. Taken by Gaines. He will have the puck stolen from him, though. Panthers goal, scored by number two, Dan Fayok. Assist to number eight, West Bauman. And number 14, Derek Spittler. That's Fayok from Bauman and Spittler. A power play goal scored at 13-23. That puck will be cleared out by the Lakers. That was Gramza. And now it's taken by the Panthers. We'll also clear it. We have a bit of game of Pong going here. Over now to Scherer, who goes quickly up to get to Gibbs. Is clear. Will be taken by the Panthers. There's just no opportunities here for the Lakers to dump it down low and set up behind the net. That's one of their specialties that they did yesterday that really set up for some uh, really good goals. So today, if they can't get it behind the net, I don't think they're going to be able to set up for very much. Williams got caught up behind the net up once already. Seems to get tied up with a Panther player. As it goes now to Sherrod, who shoots, saved by Williams. Lakers with it, trying to get it out of the zone. And they will succeed. This will be called for icing, but no, it's taken by Azra. Over to King. And it will be blown off sides, I believe. Definitely a turn of events here. Four to one. I, 11 minutes left in the first period. Four to one, the Panthers had the lead here. I mean, yesterday we had five goals to ta uh, tally up at the end of the period, but who would have thought that the Panthers would come on this strong early on in the game? The Panthers seem to have learned some lessons from yesterday. They definitely came out fighting. Haven't played the most physical game, but they definitely have played their game which includes a very successful dump and chase. Blank falls over the puck now. It goes to Camlin. 
Camlin looks for an open man. He finds it in Stefanski. He shoots, but I think it was deflected wide. With it now is Spittler from the Panthers. Spittler looks. He has two Lakers ahead of him. He gets through into the corner. Covered hard by Miranda, who will check him. Some very physical play from Mike Miranda. He is definitely a man on the mission right now. Looks like the linesman's calling a penalty here. Might be Miranda for head contact there with his fist. Yeah, he's got him for a rough. Miranda was beginning to look like a loose cannon there, and unfortunately, he got tied down. He really did clobber him. I don't know what he's arguing about going into the box, but he definitely got fist contact to the head. First year's penalty to number eight, Mike Miranda. Two minutes for roughing. Miranda, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty, 10:26. Down three goals, just halfway through the first period of play. The last thing the Laker needs is a penalty kill. With it now is Warren. He looks at his options, and he tries to find it in Gramza, but he, no, I'm sorry, that's uh, Kenny Hunt, who couldn't corral the puck. Hunt with it, he'll clear, but it'll go right to Derek Spittler. Spittler looks at his options, goes to Bruskowski. Looks like they're changing responsibilities for leading that power play on the Panthers' side. Looks like they're giving it more over to Derek Spittler than they did to Bobby Connor yesterday, and it's definitely showing that he is leading this, considering he got the assist on the last goal on the power play. Lakers will clear, taken by Bruskowski. He will go over to Connor. Bruskowski. Tries to find Bauman, but the puck was just a little bit out of reach. Odell chases it. Fayok on his tail. Lakers will try to clear it out, but it's kept at the blue line by Connor. Bauman. Bauman dumps it back to Spittler, who dumps it back to Connor. Connor over to Azroff. And the rebound was cleared by the Mercier's Laker. Warren chasing. A little bit of hooking on Connor. But that was no water skiing effort. With it now are the Panthers, Bauman, skating quickly up ice, looking for the open man. Still looking, eventually finds it in Connor at the point. Over to Azroff. Azroff shoots, but that'll be deflected away from the net. Lakers with it now, that's Gaines. Gaines decides to clear it up. Looks like the Lakers are playing more of an aggressive penalty kill, but it might not be working towards their advantage considering that once they put on too much pressure, it kicks out rebounds there and leaves opportunities open for the Panthers. There is a cross check being called on the Panthers. We'll have four on four hockey for the next five seconds. After which, we'll see the Laker power play. 8.31 remaining in the first period of play here at Mercier's College. The Lakers are down four to one. Panthers penalties to number 19, Christopher Cordero. Two minutes for cross-checking. Cordero, two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the penalty, 8.31. Mike Miranda retakes the ice. He will quickly skate to his bench. And the Laker power play is now on the ice. It's Henry can't stop the puck, but he will chase it into his own corner. Pressured quickly by Devin Spittler. Moran, it's Stepanski, I'm sorry. Carr with it. Over to Henry. Gaines calls for the puck. He won't get it. Looks like they're trapped in their own zone. Definitely a lot of pressure coming on here from the Panthers on their forecheck, trying to get the puck, trying to get some shorthanded opportunities. But let's see if the Lakers can set up on their first power play opportunity here right now. Revit dumps it into Gaines, who dives, makes a shot. But that dribbling puck was covered quickly by Kevin Lothert. There'll be a face-off to the left of Kevin Lothar. The goaltender for the Central Penn Panthers took the ice in the second period yesterday and let in two goals on 14 shots. With it now is Martin. He shoots, 
And that'll be deflected. It'll be cleared. Odell will chase. Williams will play it. Odell with the puck. He looks and hands it off to Warren. Warren goes coast to coast. Makes the shot, but it was a nice, easy save by Lothar. Fought for now by Kenny Hunt. But he will lose that battle. And it will be cleared by the Panthers. Williams plays it over to Odell, who will dump it in to his own man and Martin. Kenny Hunt will now have the puck. Pressured a lot by Fetter. Hunt over to Warren. Warren takes a quick shot looking for the rebound. He will get it, and it goes into the corner. Shot in by Odell. That will hit off a few men before being covered by Lothar. Yeah, definitely this power play looks a little shaky right now, even getting out of the zone to set up on a breakout. But if they could just get that puck to the net into Lothar's breadbasket there and pick up some rebounds, definitely would create a lot more chances. But crashing the net can only do so much when you're not hitting the net. It was easy to forget that the Lakers were indeed on the power play. The Panther penalty ending just now to Cordero. The Panthers will try to clear it out. And they will get it to Bobby Connor, who's in alone. In alone by himself on his team, but he has two Lakers around him who will steal the puck. And the puck will eventually get to Bobby Williams, who will cover for the whistle. Well, speaking of Bobby's there, uh, Bobby Connor crashing in that hard there. Almost left them with an opportunity to take this game to a four goal lead, five to one, but definitely have to cover up these rebounds or cover up the puck from preventing rebounds for this Panthers team that is very strong going to the net. Now, hockey's a very superstitious game, and at every Pens game, when Cotton Eye Joe is played, there is a goal within the next five minutes. Here's hoping that it'll co carry over to the Lakers, who perhaps will take this to within two goals. At Buffalo Sabres games, you don't even want to know what's on the Jumbotron during Cotton Eye Joe. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> well, unfortunately, there was no one dancing in the stands for this one, but it wasn't. When you got an image of Sabretooth, the mascot for the Sabres, playing a banjo and a, and a rooster bobbing up and down in the background, not really a friendly image. I think this is one of those cliche songs overplayed at hockey games. But hey, if they score within the next five minutes, I'll be very surprised. Maybe we should play the song more often. Indeed. Taken now by the Panthers, who will clear it up to Brzezkowski, who races in with one man ahead of him. He will dump it along off the Feller boards. Brzezkowski gets it back, looking for his own man. He won't find it. Lakers battle for it, gains with it. He's pressured by Scherer. Brzezkowski over to Spittler. Gains. Gains with the puck. He will lose it as he's roughed up. Whitney Gibbs doesn't like that. There's a bit of a battle going on right on here on the inboards. Whistle is blown. Someone's calling a penalty. On who and for what, we're not sure yet. Looks like we got a holding, holding call coming up here to Whitney Gibbs. Definitely wrapped his arm around him. Definitely saw the hold. Ref didn't see it because he got involved with the play, but the linesman did catch it. Gibbs doesn't like that call. He's definitely talking to the referee about that. As is Warren. The Lakers definitely do not like that call, especially considering that they will be on the penalty kill for the next two minutes, with five minutes and four seconds remaining in this first period of play. The Lakers will win the faceoff. 22, Whitney Gibbs, two minutes for holding. Gibbs, two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty, 5.04. Panthers with it. Azroff gets checked. He will pass it off to Spittler. Spittler eventually goes to Connor. Connor looks. He will go around the man. Troll tries to get around Miranda, but he can't do that. With it now, as the Panthers set up the power play, Connor will shoot. Blocker saved by Williams. Kenny Hunt will lose the puck. With it now is Spittler. So he'll wind up and shoot, and will go off the glove of Williams. Panthers with it now, looking. And three shots so far on this power play. Just 43 seconds in. The Panthers have done quite a bit on this 
power play so far today. I don't know what Coach Bo Perlant did with this team last night after losing this 7-3, but this time they're in the driver's seat of this game and very dangerous, especially on a power play. Face off eventually taken by the Panthers. Blank with it. He will clear it in and it'll go off the Zamboni. Linesman calls for a new puck and there'll be a face off. They just put in new glass here at the Mercier Ice Arena and the one thing that always baffles me is that hole in the scorekeeper's box is way too small to squeeze a puck through, which is kind of pointless. I really think they should open it up. I mean, it's just a small enough hole for the referee's lips to come up to and announce whatever he has to, but I can barely hear anybody on the outside of that glass. I don't know why it's that small. Really doesn't make sense, but the scorekeepers seem to like to tossing the puck over. Give them a little exercise, that's for sure. Get that uh, baseball arm going. <laughs> Stepanian, I'm sorry, Stefanski will go over to Odell, who clears it in off the far boards. Wyskowski will take it. Lakers can't seem to capitalize on their dump and chase. Even though they are on the uh, penalty kill, 30 seconds remaining on that penalty. With it now is Spittler. Devin Spittler goes over. Eventually gets to Brzkowski after hitting off a Lakers player, but it will go out of the zone. And there's quite a bit of yelling going on as the Lakers get the puck back. Gaines with it. He's fighting for it, but he just can't seem to hold on to the puck. Too many men around him. With it now is Martin. Fayok gets it, shoots. Pad save by Williams. Panthers managed to keep it into their, in the, the Lakers zone, but not for long. The Lakers have, have gained possession of the puck once again. Diaz will eventually come out of the, that little huddle with it. After two shots on Williams, there'll be a whistle. Looks like there'll be a slashing call on who I'm not sure. Not sure who we have a penalty up here against. It looks like the Panthers are going, so this second opportunity here for the Lakers. Maybe they'll try to generate some offense here on the power play. That'll be Derek Fetter going into the box. Two minutes for slashing. With 2.35 remaining in this first period, the Lakers will have their second chance on the power play. 4-1 Panthers. Lakers will eventually win the faceoff, taken by Warren. Panthers penalty to number six, Derek Fetter. Two minutes for slashing. Fetter, two minutes for slashing. Time of the penalty, 2.35. Warren will clear it. Kenny Hunt chasing, but it's called for icing. 1.45 remaining in the penalty. That's one thing that coaches never like is icing on a power play opportunity. It just takes more time off the clock to get things generated in their own zone and break out all the way down. So definitely got to take advantage of the most time on this power play because these power plays are very far and few between for the Lakers, but more and plenty for the Panthers. Hunt will win the draw off of over Spittler. Derek Spittler, quite the player. Carr with it, dumps it in as he's checked hard by Derek Spittler. Another whistle as Kevin Lothert covered the puck and there will be a face off to his right. <laughs> I have nothing to say about the music. I don't get it. I think it's broke. Actually, I think it gives out great advice. Uh, move your body or shake your body. I don't know. It sounds like uh, definitely the kind of advice that the Lakers need right now to move your body and get it to the front of the net and put that puck in the, right in the back of that net. Well, they're trying to as Kenny Hunt battles behind the net, but it will be cleared by the Panthers. One, one twelve remaining on the penalty. Definitely looks like the physical edge is leaning towards the Panthers today. Definitely a flip side of the physical game that the Lakers brought on yesterday. So let's see if Whitney Gibbs and uh, Matt Warren can respond today. As we said in the pregame show, it was all about whether or not the Panthers will have learned something, capitalize, and fight back. Mercius needs to send a message in the waning minutes of the first period and tell, uh, tell the Panthers that, yes, they are still in control of this game. Stefanski chases in. He looks for the puck. He will get it out to Warren. Still fighting for it. Eventually goes to Carr, who will dump it in. Played by Lothert. Eventually over to Henry. It will go out of the zone. 
last minute of play in the first period. Stefanski with it. He can't hold on to the puck. But it will eventually go to Carr. Carr clears it in. Nice shot into the belly of Kevin Lothert, who will have it, uh, hold it and have the whistle blown. Got a face off down low here. 14 seconds left on that power play. Maybe the Lakers can go to the locker room only being down by two. That's probably the best bet right now, but they're definitely looking like the Panthers from yesterday, not having a lot of opportunities to generate some offense here. So let's see if they can take advantage of this power play as it closes out the period. 47 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Less than 10 seconds remaining on that penalty. And it looks like there will be another penalty called. Who's going off? Looks like the Panthers, looks like Panthers number three here. He's getting called for holding up front. That's Chris Azroff, the defenseman, kind of held up his man up in front of the net, preventing him from getting any opportunities. Well, this is the first five on three for the Mercier's Lakers for eight seconds here, but still they'll start off the next period with the power play. Five on three for eight seconds. 43.3 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Panthers penalty to number three, Chris Azroff, two minutes for holding. Azroff, two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty, 43 seconds. Federer will retake the ice. The Lakers are only playing five on four now, but they will go off sides with 31.3 seconds remaining in the first period of play. I'm John Baranowski, with me as always is David Stearns, here at Mercier's College in Erie, Pennsylvania. Men's club hockey versus the junior B team, Central Penn Panthers. With it now is Warren, who will make the end run, deke around a man, go around the net. He looks for the open man, and he will know. He will shoot it, would make the glove save Kevin Lothar. Somebody must have pulled the Jack Jam CD out of the, uh, the little basket there ain't the bed that hasn't been open for, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years. This is like high school all over again. I love it. And the Lakers hopefully will be all ready for this. 15 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Played back is Martin over to Warren, who will dump it in. Chased by Whitney Gibbs. Gibbs goes in front. He's looking to put the puck underneath Lothar's pads. Pull a J.S. Jaguar. Peterson is definitely trying to send a message there saying that the Lakers are tough and physical just by finishing out that defenseman in front of the net. Fayok didn't look too happy about him coming across. He thought it was a little late, but I think it was right on time. Looks like we'll have one last face-off here. 4.1 seconds remaining in the first period of play. Lakers need to win this and take a quick shot, but they won't do it. And Spittler will end this game. All right, that's the first period of play. We will see you right after this. And at the beginning of the second period of play here at Mercier's College between the Mercier's Lakers and the Central Penn Panthers, the Lakers are down 4-1 to one and on the power play for the next 1 minute, 16 seconds. Let's, let's hope that the Lakers can generate some sort of offense off this power play because there are not many opportunities as it is with just regular 5-on-5 five five hockey. So hopefully Coach McKinnon talked to these boys and got them back in line, but I'm sure Coach Boferlant's feeling pretty good right now going into this period. I'm John Baranowski, and with me is David Stearns. We wait for the first face-off of the second period. That face-off will be won by Central Penn, who will clear it in and now taken by Odell of the Lakers. He will dump it in, but it goes off a player's arm. Up high and then played by Kevin Lothert, the goaltender for the Central Penn Panthers. Odell tries to clear it back into the zone. He won't do so, but he ends up getting it back. Spittler almost picked up a fumble there. He could have had a clear breakaway to the net and God only knows what would have happened then. Gaines had the puck, and as he went through, there was a penalty called by the referee. Looks like a hook. That should be against the Panthers. And it will be against number 14, Derek Spittler. Mercier's will have a five-on-three advantage for the next 48 seconds. 19.31 on the clock. Central Penn penalty to number 14, Derek Spittler, two minutes for hooking. At Spittler, two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, 1931. And Chris Martin will push it in to Kenny Hunt. The quick one-timer will go behind Kevin Lothert. 
and the Mercedes Lakers will score a quick one. 44 seconds into the second period of play. Four to two, the Panthers are leading in the second period of play. That was one heck of a goal by Kenny Hunt. I think that goal is going to Peterson here. Let's oh, I'm out. sorry, Gary Peterson. I stand corrected. First year's goal, a power play goal, scored by number 23, Gary Peterson. Assist to number 21, Chris Martin, and number four, Ben Odell. That's Peterson from Martin and Odell on the power play at 1916. That was still a phenomenal goal, and the Lakers are still on the power play for another one minute, 11 seconds. Goes now to Martin, who will shoot, and that will be a save by Lothar. Odell with it. He winds up and shoots. Rebound taken by Peterson. Lothar will cover up, and there's a bit of a fight in front of the net, but it's quickly broken up by the officials. Less than a minute remaining in the penalty. Definitely a lot more offense coming in the terms of the Lakers' power play. Finally, they get a power play goal register here. Hopefully, they can get another one because they could definitely use it to close that gap into one goal. Kenny Hunt will take the face off. And I thought he had that, but no, it was taken by the Panthers, who will clear it out. Played by Bobby Williams, the goaltender. Fought for, Panthers will take it. David Carr, will, um, Gannon Carr, I apologize. Cleared it up. And now shot in by Henry. Warren with it, he tries to go around the player and he'll eventually succeed. He shoots and that'll go wide. Carr, off the inboards. He will get it back but it will go over his stick and out past the red line. Warren with it now in his own zone. He goes over to Henry. He will go up. That looked like that was intended for Warren, but he didn't want the puck. Carr. Nine seconds remaining on the penalty. Peterson. Peterson looks. He just can't get it. Just a panion. And the whistle will be blown. Should be mentioned that uh, Devin Henry has been moved back onto the point. Uh, he's staying up at the blue line because of the injury to Mike Miranda that's kind of limited to him here with a pain in his elbow. So the lines have shifted quite a bit from yesterday, but let's see if that chemistry can blend between all these new lines that have been matched up. Lakers fighting for it in the Panther zone in the near corner. Eventually taken by the Lakers. That's Stefanski with it. Stefanski can't hold on to it, though. It's eventually taken by Gramza. And now to Fetter of the Panthers. Oh, stolen quickly by Stepanian. And he will be off sides. That was quite a play setting up there, but they were just a little faster than the puck. Well, if you would have gotten back on sides on time, I really think that a break towards the net would have helped them a lot, creating some opportunities. That's what they need to do is create more scoring chances because in the first period, they barely had any whatsoever. Here in the second period of play, 17 minutes on the clock. Dumped into the Panther zone, played by Lothar. Diaz waits for the puck. It'll go far past him. And it looks like Williams will play the puck. Now taken by number 18, Pat Scherer. Scherer over to Gaines. Chased now by Revit. Cleared into the Lakers' zone, Shackleton chasing. But Hunt, I'm sorry, Sheryl will beat him to the puck. With it now is Fayok, who clears it in. I believe that's Azeroth. Panthers with quite a bit of prowess right here. But the Lakers will get it back. No, taken back by the Panthers. That's Sherrod. Diaz. Diaz dipsy doodles around the player, shoots it quickly into the bread basket of Bobby Williams, who will hold on. Earlier, David Gaines laid in a pretty good check to finish off the play down in the offensive zone. And the way he gets back, that's what I like about him the most, is he's a versatile player that can play both sides of the puck, defensively and offensively. I think he's going to be one of the bigger guys out there, as far as presence-wise, playing both sides of the puck 
playing great offensive and defensive hockey. The crowd tries to get into it. Beginning the here we go Lakers chant. Lakers with the puck, that's Warren. Goes to Odell, now Warren with it. Goes back to Peterson. Peterson looks, tries to find Warren, but that pass is intercepted by the Panthers. Cordero goes over to Mr. Man number five, who's now Kyle Troop. Now taken by the Lakers. That's Warren, who winds up, shoots, and it'll be wide. Kenny Hunt looks to chase it, but he couldn't get to the puck quick enough. Cleared out, Odell chasing. Odell with the puck. He looks pressured by Buskowski, who will get it. Odell eventually gets it back and tries to clear it. Azeroff will take the puck instead. Lots of time spent in the Lakers' zone this period. A lot of clearing going on. Both teams trying to play a dump and chase. With it now is Spittler. That's Derek Spittler. He will shoot. He looked for a man of the point. Didn't see one. Number 22, Dolan, tried to keep it in. He could not do so. Lakers' Warren will take the puck now. Goes around a man. Goes around two men. Looks. Tries to make a shot. He can't do so. The rebound was taken by the Panthers and cleared out. Icing will be called. 14-20 remaining in the second period of play. I'm John Baranowski here with David Stearns. Well, definitely uh, some good hands there, some soft hands by Matt Warren, but I should also like to point out that Bobby Williams looks a little bit more confident in that in the start of this period. Definitely uh, not putting out too many rebounds for any opportunities for the Panthers to pick up on. He's definitely playing the puck a lot smarter than he did in the first period. Sometimes you just have to shake the rust off. And it looks like... Mike Miranda is not dressed for the second period. It looks like he is out for the rest of the game considering his elbow injury. So Devin Henry is now a permanent fixture on the blue line. 4-2 Panthers in the second period of play. Face off. Won eventually by the Lakers. But now taken by the Panthers. Connor with it. He looks to get it out of his own zone. Bounds Bauman and will do so. Panthers chase after it and go around number 24, Pat Leone. Panthers have it again behind the net. That's Connor. Lakers get it back. Up. Oh. Camlin couldn't hold on to the puck. Connor with it. Two men in front. That, pat, that shot went wide. Williams looked like he was going for the glove save. Just a little bit out of reach. Number 19, Stepanian with it. Clears it. Taken by the Panthers. Pat Leone really fighting for the puck now. Looks like Leone's going to get called for a trip there. His stick got tangled up there trying to play the puck, but I think it was just more incidental contact with the stick instead of, you know, an incidental trip. By any means, he's not happy with this call. And who would be? He was really fighting for the puck, trying to get some uh, fight back into the uh, Mercer's Lakers. Four down, two goals halfway through the game. Maybe a little bit of Rocky will do the job for him. We're going to need to play some physical hockey here on the penalty kill in order to prevent them uh, the Panthers from getting more power play goals. The first period, the power play for the Panthers looked so strong there that they had how many, two power play goals, it could be possibly three more, or <laughs> three if they get this on. To number 24, Pat Leone, two minutes for tripping. Leone, two minutes for tripping. Time in the penalty, 13-24. And every time we listen to the PA announcer, <laughs> The Lakers put it in. Something good always happens every time that PA guy comes on. I don't know who that PA guy is, but uh, he's got a lot of luck. Oh, he's good, too. He's very good. That was put in by David Gaines, his third goal of the season. Phenomenal goal. We will wait for the PA announcement. We'll be changing cameraman shortly. So please stick with us. Fayok clears it in. Mercer's goal, scored by number 20, David Gaines. It's a shorthanded goal from Gaines, unassisted. Time of the goal, 13-14. With how many penalties are taken by these Mercer's Lakers, they really need to get good 
on the PK, scoring shorthanded goals. And now the Panthers have it in the Lakers zone deep. But it's eventually cleared out of the zone by the Lakers. I believe that was number 18, Pat Scherer. Panthers with it now, but he can't hold on to the puck. Kenny Hunt will clear it down the ice. This penalty kill definitely looks a lot more confident. I guess they don't need a power play to score goals. Maybe they just have to be shorthanded. Who knows? Odell fights for the puck. He'll eventually win that battle over Cordero. And there's a whistle. Too many men. Too many men on the ice. 12 minutes, 18 seconds remaining in this second period of play. Lakers down 4-3. to three. Coach, Bo uh, Coach Bo Perlant does not look too happy with that, claiming that he didn't touch the puck as he came on the ice, that sixth man. But we'll have to wait and see how they react to this going four on four, opening up the game just a bit. Uh, All right. My back takes up there, thanks. Okay. All right. We wait and see as the officials talk about things. Oh, I, I guess I'm wrong. It looks like Lakers got called with too many men. Oh, it was a little off there. That's all right. So is the scorekeeper as we have two penalties marked on the scoreboard. Well, no, actually, he's right. I'm wrong. <laughs> the Lakers will be playing at a two-man disadvantage. First year's penalty, bench minor penalty, too many men. That's Mercier's penalty, too many men. Time of the penalty, 12-18. Devin Spittler goes over to Heinle, but it's offsides. 12-01, remaining in the second period of play. Here, 4-3 Panthers. We wait for the faceoff. As Mercier's Lakers are down, two men for the next 37 seconds. Warren will lose the draw. Now goes over to Connor. Connor looks across the blue line. Looks at his options, quarterbacking the play. He eventually finds his man in Bauman. Bauman shoots, blocker save. Panthers will have it, and they'll go back. I can't tell if that's Bauman or Fetter. I'm going to go with Bauman over to Connor. A shot block attempt by Martin. Instead, the player will not shoot, but that definitely foiled his attempt. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough as Bobby Williams was in the butterfly and it went right over his pad glove side once again. Sometimes you just can't reach out and make that save. The five seconds on the penalty to number 24, Pat Leone, will be taken off the clock. But the Lakes will be down for another man for a minute 11. That definitely hurts. Second five on three opportunity for the Panthers. Mercier's Lakers got to be reeling on that. They got to play more disciplined hockey, especially for the rest of this period and going into the third if they want to come out on top of this one. With it was Dolan. Gibbs puts it in. Looks like he'll knock. Bayock was knocked down by the puck. Panthers with it now. Over to Connor. He looks at his options, plays his cards right, and goes over to Spittler. Azeroff. Panthers goal, power play goal, scored by number 14, Derek Spittler. Assist to number two, Dan Fayok. And number three, Chris Azeroff. That's Spittler from Fayok and Azeroff. A power play goal at 11.29. There's a myriad of shots right in front of the net. Williams held on, an amazing play. Nobody could put it in on him. They're trying again for that glove side over the pad. Looks like the man has learned his lesson. Looks like another five on three opportunity for the Panthers. Gannon Carr is getting called for roughing here. This, this is not a good situation for the Lakers by any means. But, yeah. <laughs> in that situation though, during the, the PA announcing, there must have been six shots on Williams within the crease. Within three feet of the net, there were six shots. And taking a roughing is a whole lot better than letting a goal in. Timeout, Central Penn. Central Penn will call their timeout. 18 seconds remaining on the five on three. 10 36 remaining in the second period of play. The Lakers down five to three. 
There seems to be some uh, goings on here between the officials and the players. Whitney Gibbs talking with the referee. Gannon Carr will go off. Central Penn Panthers are definitely looking to score here. Put the Lakers again behind by three. Here in the second period of play, that would be a whole lot more than it was when they were up 4-1. Big turnaround from yesterday's game, where the Mercyhurst Lakers had won 7-3. Pouring on five goals against the first goaltender, which was Wilkerson. Well, this can't be a good situation for the Lakers, and I, I understand that they're trying to work on things during exhibition games like this with the uh, penalty kill and power play, but not enough opportunities to see that power play, but I mean... This is like, what, the third five-on-three situations that the Lakers are up against? I well, sure believe so. I, uh, I'm afraid to see if the Panthers will capitalize on this, but they probably will, considering that they're very strong on these five-on-three opportunities. Well, it's hard for the Lakers to be so strong whenever they're down two men. Two minutes for roughing. Carr, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty, 10.36. Carr, definitely the shot man as he looks for a second, but he will pass it this time. That first shot saved by Bobby Williams. Lakers now only down two men as number 16, Lizick, comes back on the ice. That shot will get through to Williams, but it won't get through Williams. Connor calling for the puck, but it'll go to Bauman. Back over to Azroff, and eventually pushed out by Gaines. Like I said earlier about David Gaines, very aggressive player, a very smart poke check there in the defensive zone. But now you got to see him get back here. Now we're down to five on four. Hopefully the Lakers can pull off another minute of great power, uh, penalty killing. One minute, four seconds remaining as Warren makes a breakaway. Chased by one man. He looks. He shoots and scores! Four, five with a Panther lead. Five, I'm sorry, 9.35 remaining in the second period of play. Another shorthanded goal here by the Mercyhurst Lakers. It's something about that penalty kill that's suddenly been sparked into some sort of offensive machine. Finding those opportunities, Matt Warren definitely zipped outside the defenseman, cut in, got that perfect breakaway. Soft hands, like I said earlier, got him that goal. Matt Warren with outstanding play there for the Mercyhurst Lakers. Mercyhurst goal, a shorthanded goal scored by number 26, Matt Warren. That's Warren unassisted, a shorthanded goal at 9.35. Blank with the puck now. He's looking to get that tally back. Looks like that timeout worked in favor of the Lakers. Who well, I guess we're getting a little tired out there. They needed that rest. Panthers with it behind the Laker net. Spittler with it. That's Devin Spittler. He goes over to another Spittler who couldn't hold on to the puck. No, I'm sorry. That's Buskowski. He passes over to Blank who can't hold on to the puck. Kenny Hunt with it now looking for his man. Goes past Warren, but that clear will work just the same. Ten seconds remaining on the penalty to the Mercyhurst Lakers with 8.42 remaining in the second period of play. Piskowski drives in, shoots, goes wide. Lakers are now at even strength. Wesley Heinel with the puck. He passes in front of the net. The Panthers definitely look a little bit frazzled here after all the shorthanded goals that the Lakers are pouring on here. They're definitely looking shaky, and they're not connecting by any means. Pallion drives in and drops the puck back. Couldn't find a man, though. Diaz will drive in, one Laker ahead of him. He's pushed off as Stefanski takes the puck now, passes it up. Back to Leon. Leon driving in. He looks. One man ahead of him. Shoots. Oh, they'll go over the net. Diaz with it. Diaz driving up. Three on two. And it'll be whistled. I believe that was an offsides. Shackleton was a little bit ahead of the play there. He was trying to make the break around the defenseman to go crash the net and try to create some offense and uh, scoring chance there for the Panthers, but got caught a little bit uh, offside there. And a great play thwarted by the blue line. The faceoff will be here on the end boards just outside the Laker blue line. I thought Sexy was already, I thought Sexy was already brought back there in the first period. I never knew it left. Well, I'm really confused. Aren't we all? With it now, Dolan chasing the puck. Gaines will pass it out. 
Whitney Gibbs couldn't make it on the dive. With it are the Panthers once again. Dolan. He looks, tries to find Azroff, but I believe that was blocked by Revit. Revit and Gibbs. No, but eventually we'll get out to Spittler. Gaines will touch it, but it won't be enough as Dolan clears it in off the inboards. Lakers pass it around. Some physical play in the corner here. Between Spittler and Camlin, who is quite the physical player. Out now to the corner. The shot will be wide of the net. Trying for a brief wrap around to Buskowski. In the corner with it. Buskowski in front of the net. Heinel behind. The Lakers will gain control and pass it around the corner. But no, it's kept in by Dolan. Dolan seems to be a brick wall right now. I think Revit, I think Charlie Revit's going off for a hook here. Yeah, he got his stick wrapped around him. Just couldn't get away from him. Well, Sexy's back, and now we're too sexy. We just can't make up our minds here. We're either bringing it back, or we're just too sexy to bring it back anymore. I don't know. I think we're definitely too sexy to bring it back anymore. I, so. I, I don't get it. All right, and there will be a face-off to the right of goalie Bobby Williams for the Mercier's Lakers. Bauman versus Warren. Uh, face-off won by Warren. Mercier, penalty to number 14, Charlie Revit. Two minutes for hooking. Revit, two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, 6.46. Now played in off the far corner. Azrov chasing as it couldn't be kept inside the Mercier zone. Hey, maybe we're going to see another shorthanded goal here. You know, getting three in one game is kind of tough to get, but they've already got two, so it's not that impossible right now. And as L. Michaels taught us, we do believe in miracles. I haven't seen that great of a miracle since 1980. Let's see if they can pull one off here. Spittler shoots, but it's wide, and it'll go around the boards. Azrov dumps it back in. Panthers with it now in the far corner. I believe that's Bauman. Connor calling him, telling it to go to Spittler. Connor with the puck now. He looks for the shot. No, he'll go back to Spittler. Shot by Bauman off the arm of Bobby Williams. Now taken by Peterson. I must apologize. I think I actually called the Panthers communists there for a minute. But, hey, who knows? Maybe it's just a home bias. I don't know. <laughs> it happens to all of us. With it now is Connor. He looks, dances around two Lakers. Oh, and it will go around Bobby Williams. Didn't seem like he could slide the way he wanted to. Well, that five hole is left open again, and Bobby Connor knew it. He scored a goal earlier, five hole, and he found it again. This time, he gets himself his second power play goal of the game. The Lakers are now down six to four. Let me correct myself. That's his first power play goal, third power play goal for the Panthers. Unbelievable power play showing today by the Central Penn Panthers. Which is a huge difference from yesterday, where the Panthers had a, a plethora of power play opportunities and just couldn't capitalize on any of them. They did capitalize on just one. The Panthers only got one, that was from Bobby Connor. He's definitely making a standout performance here once again on the power play. Shackleton's shot will be deflected wide. With it now, Shackleton fighting for it, but the Lakers will get it. No, it's kept in. Panthers goal scored by number 23, Bobby Connor. Assist to number 30, Kevin Lothar. That's Connor from Lothar on the power play at 531. There'll be a change of lines and a face off to the right of Bobby Williams. Five minutes remaining in the second period of play. The Lakers are down six to two. Face off one by the Panthers. Briskowski's shot was deflected. Lakers will get it back. That's Spittler. He shoots. No, it'll go wide. Behind the net, beside the net, and now taken by Bobby Williams. Now, Bobby's definitely trying to make sure that no rebounds come popping out, but being down 6-4 to four at this point is a lot better than the margin that they had to go into the locker room with at 4-1 to one after the first period. So trying to narrow the gap is pretty much the name of the game right now. Third period, maybe the Lakers will try to finish it off and pull ahead. So plenty of period to tie things up here. 4.44 remaining in the second period of play. Panthers with it in the Mercier zone. The shot taken, but far wide. Lakers with it. Well, fighting for it. 
Three Lakers versus one Panther. Eventually goes to the Panthers. He will shoot that look like it would go right over the shoulders of Bobby Williams, but it went over the net. Shot by Diaz. I'm sorry, that's Dinsmore. With it now is Azrov. Shot in, number 21, which is Martin. Lakers with it, back around the horn. Fayok will eventually take it, shoot. That will go over the pad of Williams, but it won't go in the net. Looks like it was right outside, and Williams will hold on for the whistle. I'm kind of speechless right now. I mean, just the Lakers are trapped inside their own zone. Panthers are definitely cycling it, finally getting it tape to tape, and starting to work the work out the cycle plays that they want to here. It's not really clearly defined, but the Lakers just can't read it either. I don't know what it is, but the Panthers are having great success right now towards the end of the second period. The Lakers look just a little bit melancholy right now. The captains need to get into the locker room and really put a fire under this team. Warren definitely fighting like he still has that fire. Peterson looks to shoot, supporting Warren. He will go around the net. Lakers now set up in the Panther zone. First time in a while. Behind the net is Kenny Hunt, looking for either Gannon Carr or, or Warren. Matt Warren with the puck. He goes in front to Peterson. Peterson shoots, no, it'll go over the net. Kenny Hunt fighting for it behind the net. With it now is Gannon Carr. Carr dumps it in, past Peterson, over to Kenny Hunt. And it will go in! That was Matt Warren with the excellent goal to bring the Lakers within one with 3.15 remaining in the second period of play. Matt Warren. The Lakers have brought it within one here at Mercier's College on home ice. Matt Warren, the captain, definitely playing with a bunch of fire. Hopefully this will greatly help the, the uh, Mercer's Lakers going into the locker room. Into the Panther zone. Mercer Harris goal, his second of the night, scored by number 26, Matt Warren. Assist to number 17, Kenny Hunt, and number five, Gannon Carr. That's Warren from Hunt and Carr. Time of the goal, 315. Better with the puck. He clears it in to the Mercier zone, played by Williams, puts it around the boards and has to dance around two players to get back into the net. With it is Stefanski. So he will play it around and eventually go to Leon. Camlin chasing the puck, Azroff with it. Azroff will get, away, get the puck away from him too quickly. Stefanski, fighting off some Panthers, goes to Gannon Carr who will dump it in. Camlin chasing which is Ryan Dolan. It goes in front of the Panther net and will be blocked away. With it now is, oh, well with it now is Charlie Revit, who will shoot, but that will be wide in front of the net. Picked up by Henry. Gibbs tries to get it, but he can't. And will eventually go way up to the Panthers, who thought they had a breakaway, but there was one man right in front a nice stick save by Bobby Williams to bring the puck back in the other direction. Very fortunate. They could have went down by two again, but Bobby just had that leg right out in perfect timing. But it looks like now we have a penalty coming up here to the Panthers. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. Bobby Connor will come off the ice, and six men will be on for the Lakers. The Lakers have to be careful here. If it happens to go in their net, it is still a goal. However, the Panthers will touch it. And the penalty will be called with 124 remaining in the second period of play here at Mercier's College. I'm John Baranowski, and with me is David Stearns. Here for the second game of the men's club hockey season, 2007-2008, against the Central Penn Panthers of the Metropolitan Junior Hockey League. The faceoff will be outside the Mercier's blue line, off the inboards. Taken by Derek Spittler, but won by Kenny Hunt. To number 28, Matt Sherrod, two minutes for roughing. Matt Sherrod, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty, 124. 
Lakers will pass it up to Peterson. Hunt. He will dump it in. Taken by Warren now. Warren looks to set up the play. Warren with it still. And it goes in. Warren with his second goal of the night. Third goal. That's the hat trick. Doesn't look like there's too many hats on the ice tonight. But that is a hat trick in the last minute of play in the second period. Matt Warren will tie it up for the Mercier's Lakers. Six all, a power play goal. Obviously, we don't have any hat wearers in here, but I don't know if they're even aware of it. The, uh, Matt Warren's goal there just tied this one up. I, I must be uh, sending telepathic messages to Coach McKinnon. I said, narrow the gap, bring it down to a tie, try to finish it off in the third period. I think he heard me. He just might have. Matt Warren playing with fire, and hopefully that will carry over to the other players as we enter the locker room in just 50 short seconds. First goal, his third of the night, scored by number 26, Matt Warren. Assist to number 17, Kenny Hunt. That's Warren from Hunt on the power play at 57 seconds. Hunt with it, Peterson beside him. Hunt will shoot, he looks. And the penalty being called against the Panthers once again. With it now is Odell. Odell looks for his options, he goes in the corner. Stefanski, Stefanski will look in front of the net, finds Peterson. No, he won't. That'll go to, who is it? I can't even tell. That's Camlin. Kenny Hunt back there. I'm sorry, that's Kenny Hunt behind the net. And the shot by Chris Martin will eventually be whistled. Yeah, tripping call coming up here. Tripping. I think it's uh, Derek Fetter that's going to the box here for tripping. Be oh, and he penalty. accidentally clocked the referee in the head with the blade of his stick. That will not get him any brownie points, I don't think, whatsoever. I'm sure the ref will remember his number next period. That's what you call a big whoopsie. With 14.7 seconds remaining in the second period of play, the Mercier's Lakers have tied it up at six. We wait for the faceoff. Stefanski will take it against Spittler. There'll be a whistle from the linesman. And here's the penalty. Central Penn penalty to number six, Derek Fetter. Two minutes for tripping. Fetter, two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 14 seconds. Five seconds remaining. The puck taken by Stefanski. They're trying to get something here, but there's just not enough time as it'll be a quick save after the green light. And here to close out the second period of play, the Mercier's Lakers have come back to tie it all at six. Welcome back to Mercier's College. I'm John Baranowski here with David Stearns. The beginning of the third period between the Mercier's Lakers and the Central Penn Panthers. With Stefanski with it. Goes over to Henry who shoots. That'll be deflected by David. Looks like the Panthers have made a goaltending change. That's number one, Malone. Yeah, it looks like they put in Malone there. Maybe uh, he'll lead them strong through the rest of this period, but it should be noted here that Matt Warren did get credit for Gary Peterson's goal earlier when it was announced, but here's something interesting for everyone to know. Matt Warren scored the last three goals. He got a natural hat trick, but not only that, he got a shorthand goal, an even strength goal, and a power play goal. I'm calling that thing the blue collar hat trick right there. That's a good term. That's a good name there. I like that. Going to copyright that one? Oh, I'm going to have to. I like it. Definitely. Coming out of the Panther zone is Dolan. He skates around a few players and makes a shot, but that's saved by Bobby Williams. Lakers with it now. That's Henry over to Carr. Again, and Carr goes to Warren. Matt Warren makes a shot on that, but that's an easy save by Malone, the new goaltender. Not only did he take a strong shot on net, but he also finished a, a tremendous check. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that, that was... Was that Warren who scored that? I, I think so. Every time I open my mouth, something good happens here. I don't know, man. Maybe you should start doing play-by-play. -play. <laughs> well, I think I'm better analyzing the game from this point, so. Wow. If that's his fifth goal, he is definitely one of the stars of this game for sure. Last night, he was definitely proved as a star. Tonight, he is just phenomenal. He is on fire. Fifth goal, you say? I think so. Wow. Uh, that, that shot was so hard right in front of the He slap shot from within the crease. And that shot bounced in and out of the net so quick that I didn't even know it went in. 
Yeah, he definitely got that tight corner there. Definitely a surprise shot from the side. I don't even think Malone saw it coming. We need a red light behind the net, seriously. Like I said, people, whoever, wanna, whoever wants to volunteer to be our goal judges, you're more than welcome to come by and help us out. Definitely. Contact uh, T. McKinnon at Mercyhurst.edu. All right, well, that goal's actually going to Peterson. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought maybe that was Peterson. Warren and Peterson have definitely put up a huge one-two punch here today. A goal. Here's goal, a power play goal scored by number 23, Gary Peterson. Assist to number 26, Matt Warren. And number 17, Kenny Hunt. That's Peterson from Warren and Hunt. A power play goal scored at 1859. Peterson really had a wicked slap shot right there. Went in and out so fast. Oh, most definitely in that. And I think uh, he might have realized that he didn't really score that goal earlier. So he said, I'm going to make it on the stat sheet as a goal there. So he definitely uh, carried through there. Definitely helped Def out. The power play is definitely looking a lot more improved today than it was yesterday. Oh, definitely. All right, and with it is Spittler. He drives quickly. Looks for Heinel, but no, it will be caught by a Laker. They're going to push it up, but Blank will take over and shoot it. That'll be outside. Lakers fighting off a penalty right now, and that will be whistled dead at 17.30, remaining in the third period of play. The Lakers finally taking the lead 7-6. We'll find out what the call is momentarily. Looks like that will be on Gramza. Mark Gramza will enter the box. We'll find out for what momentarily. I think he got called for a cross check there. I uh, didn't exactly see it clearly. I was kind of looking away for that split second, but I think I caught it out of the corner of my eye. Yeah, definitely uh, the Lakers got to stop taking all these penalties. They're very undisciplined. First year's penalty to number 13, Mark Ramza. Two minutes for cross checking. Ramza, two minutes for cross checking. Time of the penalty, 17.30. And during a great uh, scoring chance for the Panthers, the net goes off its moorings. Bauman skated just a little too hard there. Well, you know what? He's got to skate hard because, you know, all these power play opportunities, I mean, definitely they're racking up the power play goals. They have already four power play goals, and they definitely need to capitalize on this one. And the net pipe is the goalie's best friend right there. Yeah. I think I almost talked too, or spoke too soon there. I believe that was Bauman's shot again. Definitely a power play guy. I mean, him and Connor definitely leading the way, but other guys have proved to step up today, like players like Spittler. Yes, Derek Spittler. I'm sorry, yeah, Derek Spittler has definitely been a star player on this power play, along with Bobby Connor and Bauman. West Bauman. With it behind their own net are the Panthers. Looking for the open man, he'll find Azroff. Azroff goes over to Bauman. Bauman crosses the blue line. He looks, goes to Spittler, who shoots, so that'll be wide. Connor with it now at the point. He looks to Bauman, no, can't get it there. Fayok chasing, but he's fought off by Carr. Eventually, he will get it back. Bauman behind the net. He looks. He goes to another man behind the net as he comes out into the corner. Very good cycling here down low by Spittler and the rest of the Panthers. Spittler looks. He has a few men open, goes to Connor. Connor goes back to Spittler. So I know that's Bauman with the excellent cycling. Bauman goes around the net, finds Azaroff, who shoots for the one quick one-timer. And Bobby Williams made a fantastic save and then poked it out with a stick all the way down the ice to the other net, where it's now taken by the Mercyhurst Lakers. That was Gaines pushing it in. 28 seconds remaining on the penalty. 15.55 remaining in the game here at Mercier's College. Cordero goes over to Bauman. Oh, and he's hit hard. And he'll eventually go out past the benches. Going back to talking about Matty Warren, that goal that they credited for Peterson beginning was actually, uh, well, in the second period, beginning of the second period was actually a power play goal. So he has two power play goals, even strength goal and a shorthanded goal. Gaines fighting for it. And he will be tripped up as he pushes the puck towards the net. And that's whistled dead as it hits the goaltender Malone. I almost thought that they should have called that a penalty shot. He barely got that shot away just before he got tripped down. I don't think he had enough of a lead there, or else it probably would have. Though he doesn't look like he's feeling too good after that one. It must have caught him just right. Hockey players have a reputation for being extremely tough, so I'm sure he'll just shake it off. 
The old adage from football, rub some dirt on it, walk it off, does not apply here. Uh, maybe put some ice on it and then uh, skate it off. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that works. Yeah, just lay down a little bit. You'll get some ice. Central Penn penalty to number 24, Dylan Blank. Two minutes for tripping. Blank, two minutes for tripping. Time of the penalty, 15, 30, or 26. Revit with it behind the net. He's fighting off Azra. Revit eventually gets it out again. He looks, finds Mercer's player, and then goes over to Peterson, who shoots. No, I won't get through. Fought over, right by the blue line. Stefanski can't keep it in, but it'll be held on by Scherer. Scherer looks to set up the play. He will go in to number 14, Revit. Revit will try and dump it in, and, but he cannot do that. Bobby Williams plays the puck, goes to Camlin now. Camlin looking to Scherer. Scherer with it. Well, Matty Warren's back out there, quarterback in this power play. Let's see what he can do. Maybe he'll get three power play goals. That'd be quite something to accomplish. Graham's are now back on the ice. Warren. Warren looks. He can't seem to keep a handle on the puck. He looks. He's has quite a bit of pressure on him by Shackleton. But he will eventually go to Scherer. Now back to Hunt. Warren with it. He skates in hard. No, saved by Malone. We'll get two shots out of that one. Shackleton with it now. Returning hard. 14 minutes remaining in the game. The Panthers now down by one. And that will almost go in. Whew. Bobby Williams did not play that the way he wanted to. That, that shot by Shackleton almost just bounced over. Uh, it did bounce over Bobby Williams, and it just laid there in the crease. It looked like it was fumbling towards the net, but good thing for the quick-thinking defense there to get in there in time before it rolled in. That was Gannon Carr with some quick thinking and some good stick handling just to push the puck out of the way. Kenny Hunt with it now. He looks. He dances around the man. Goes back to Henry. Henry back to Hunt. He looks. He looks. Waits. Sure, slow pass back to Henry, back to Hunt. Hunt doesn't want the puck, but he has it anyway. Around the net, fighting off some people. Now over to Gannon Carr. Carr looks, shoots, deflected by Peterson, but that won't go in. The penalty now over. Carr with it. Inside, Peterson. Gibbs with it. Back to Peterson. G Carr. He shoots it in, though, that'll go wide. Looked like Blank got caught there in the penalty box. No one was there to open that door for him, so he was stuck in there for a few more seconds than he really should have been. Henry with it, back over to Carr. Carr will look to the fresh man. Oh, they're gonna call him for too many men. Yeah, definitely, that guy got up there at the last second, but the guy that came out for the change touched the puck. They definitely got caught red-handed there. Puck just happened to be in a bad place at a bad time, and the coaching staff for the Mercier's Lakers is not happy about that call. This entire game, it looks like it's been a trade-off of uh, power plays opportunities for both sides. Pretty much, I, I'm almost thinking that the numbers are even. The Panthers are playing uh, less disciplined hockey today than they were yesterday, but the opportunities look pretty much even each side. Looks like Derek Spettler will take the face-off, as will number 14, Charlie Revit. Looks like that'll be one by Spettler. Mercer Henley, a bench minor, too many men on the ice, being served by number 16, Cruz Lizick. That's bench minor, too many men. Time of the penalty, 12.52. Connor with it behind the Mercier's net. He's going around the horn, he looks for it. Can't seem to find the man he wants. Lakers eventually get it and they'll clear with 1.37 remaining on the, pow on the uh, power play for the Panthers. 12.25 remaining in the game here in the third period. Lakers up seven to six. At this rate, you would think that the final scores can be something like 13 to 11 or 13 12. Connor with it, he looks, dumps it off to Fayok. Will shoot, and a nice kick save by Bobby Williams. Looks like there'll be a penalty. Third five-on-three opportunity coming up here for the Panthers. I don't think Coach McKinnon's very happy with this one. And just as goaltender Malone gets to the bench, it will be whistled dead as a Laker touches the puck. Looks like Chris Martin's getting called here for hooking. Kind of got the guy tied up in front. So those defensemen, they have to keep their sticks down and keep, keep their men tied up without hooking them down. And that's pretty much what the problem's been this entire game for the defense. So for one minute and 11 seconds, the Lakers will be down by two men once again. 12.04 remaining in the game. Lakers up by one, seven to six. Here's penalty to number 21, Chris Martin. Two minutes for hooking. Martin, two minutes for hooking. Time the penalty, 12.04. Bauman shot well wide. Connor with it now, he looks back to Bauman. Bauman shoots, and again, a nice kick save by the goaltender, Williams. Bobby Williams. <laughs> 
Sorry. It's okay. We're all used to seeing Faulkner out there, but definitely a change of scenery here, seeing Bobby Williams in that. The shot now, faked by Connor. Now taken, it'll go into the corner. Lakers will dump it out. Yeah, definitely this uh, penalty kill is looking a lot more solid compared to yesterday, but just, you know, letting in these power play goals on both sides, just a consistent problem for both sides. Coach Boferlant and Coach McKinnon definitely have some work to do during the practices next week. Bowen with it now, and he looks like he owns the ice going the whole way around the Lakers' zone. He eventually passes off to Connor, who shoots it, but that'll be well wide of the net. Williams caught off position twice, and he will pay for that one. Yeah, Heinel definitely saw that puck laying right there, and Bobby Williams didn't know where it was after that initial shot, so that way they get at least one of the power plays wiped off, or one of those penalties wiped off the boards on the Mercy Harris side. Power play, like I said earlier, it's been a consistent thing going on here for both sides. The eight-second penalty remaining to Cruz Lizick will be wiped off the boards. The Lakers will still be down a man for 57 seconds. All tied up at seven here with exactly 11 minutes on the dot in the third period of play here at Mercier's College. You want to place a friendly little wager on what the final score will be? Because I'm thinking it's somewhere now 16 to 14. <laughs> I'm up in the ante here. I, I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be 10 to 8. Not going to say who yet. Fair assessment. All right, now fighting for it. Two 17s. So that's uh, Kenny Hunt and Devin Spittler. It looks like it'll be whistled as Gannon Carr fell on the puck. 10.41 remaining in the game. 38 seconds remaining on the Laker penalty. That penalty, of course, to Chris Martin. As we wait for the faceoff. That faceoff won by Shackleton, who will dump it into the Lakers. Dolan with it, but he can't keep it in. Central Penn Panthers goal scored by number 16, Wesley Heinel. Assist to number 14, Derek Spittler. And number 23, Bobby Connor. That's Heinel from Spittler and Connor. A power play goal scored at 11 minutes. Blank chases the puck with 14 seconds remaining on the power play for the Panthers. Goaltender calling the shots. And he is hit hard. Who is that? Blake Camlin, a very physical freshman. Camlin yesterday sorry, definitely. Yeah, he definitely made his presence known yesterday. Every time he was on the ice, you knew he was out there because of the physical play. You'd see him dropping the boom on anybody with that puck. There he goes again. The first year player, Blake Camlin, definitely a very physical player. Oh, oh, oh. I, I waited. I, I was speechless in it's, hope. It trickled right underneath him in the five hole. Bobby Williams definitely has a lot of work to do with the five hole there, but that one was definitely a fluke goal that just kind of bobbled its way in. I think uh, you might be right here with your score assessment. Yeah. Bobby Williams had went, it went in his 5 0, and I thought he stopped it. I thought he had it with his toes. But apparently it wasn't enough. Eventually it was punched through. 8 to 7 now for the Panthers. Uh, yeah, I believe that was a power play goal. Again, special teams not paying off like it did yesterday for the Mercier's Lakers. Plenty of scoring going on as Stefanski tries to get it up, but he cannot do so. He's blocked by the Panthers. Sherrod with it now. He goes to Diaz. Diaz gets it up to Connor, but it will be taken by Miranda. Panthers have it back now. Driving inside is Connor. He has his pocket picked and will eventually go up to Leon. Leon shoots. No, it'll be deflected by Fayok. Diaz looking for the puck. Fayok will take it instead. Diaz goes around the man. And there'll be a whistle. That's offsides. 9-11 remaining in the game here at Mercier's College. The Central Penn Panthers of the MJHL are up 8-7 over the Mercier's Lakers. I'm John Baranowski, and with me as always is David Stearns. This game played Thursday night on Hearst TV. There will be another game Wednesday, uh, uh, hopefully the following Tuesday. Number 20, Robert Diaz. Assistant number 25, Chris Dinmore. And number eight, West Bowman. As Diaz from Dinmore and Bowman, time of the goal, 9.48. As I was saying, the game from Wednesday will hopefully be played Tuesday at 7 on Channel 20. That'll be this coming Tuesday. Looks like another uh, penalty coming up here to the Lakers. 
Benny O'Dell's going off for roughing. And by the way, that goal earlier was just a couple seconds shy of a power play goal. So keeping those power play numbers just where they're at right now. On the stat sheet, that'll go as an even strength goal, but in reality, that was still the power play. Yeah, you gotta take into account the time it takes to get the player off the ice and make the change, or if he's going straight to the play. So I definitely think it was up there. Face off between Warren and Spettler. That face off will be won by Warren. But the Panthers. Number four, Ben Odell, two minutes for roughing. Odell, two minutes for roughing. Time of the penalty, 848. Panthers with it now. They own the outside, especially during the power play. Spittler with it. He looks for the open man, eventually finds it in Bauman. I'm sorry, that's Azra. With it now are the Panthers. They look over to Azra, who has a quick one-timer. Saved in the bread basket of Bobby Williams. Definitely things are going the other way here. The Panthers are definitely looking to take control of this period, and so far they've done that just right with a power play goal and an even strength goal. And Lakers' only goal coming just early on in the period. Not a whole lot going on as far as offense goes for the Lakers. The Lakers will win the faceoff, but can't get it out of their zone. Whitney Gibbs tried. Valiant effort, but all for naught. Panthers will have it inside. And no, that was saved by Bobby Williams. I was waiting for the signal. I couldn't tell there was a host of Lakers in front of the net. Just a, just a big crowd in front of the net there. That's probably going to be working out towards the Panthers' advantage considering they're just crashing the net. And just getting the crowd in front of the net will cause more opportunities and scoring chances as far as deflections go. Connor with it. He goes back to Spittler. Azroff, shot was blocked. Connor with it now. Connor looks, pulls back. Waits and finds Spittler. Spittler looking. He shoots, but it's deflected. Taken by Gaines, who will get it out of the zone, but Connor will keep it eventually, who gets it right back in. Connor looks, he has Fayok to his side, and Nazaroff behind him. Fayok with it. 46 seconds remaining in the penalty to the Mercier's Lakers. Looks like the Lakers are trying to break a cardinal rule here. Every time they get the puck there in the middle, they're not using the boards, they're trying to clear up center. Every time they do that, the Panthers were there waiting for it. With it now are the Panthers. I believe that's Bauman. Who will go inside, but that's taken by Gannon Carr, who trickles the puck over the blue line. Azroff with it now. Bauman calling for the puck. He won't get it. Instead, Azroff will clear and go off. Shackleton with it. Lakers will get there first. That's Stefanski clearing it off. There we clearly see using the boards as a success in the penalty kill. Killed enough time there, and now we have the pressure from Charlie Revit here keeping that puck down in the Panthers' zone. Malone will play it off the inboards. Gaines clears it. Finds Revit. Revit behind the net. Oh, the the and he'll get the call. He was face washed there. That was just that wraparound was so tight there. I don't even think Malone realized his pad was behind the line, but the referee definitely saw it tuck in. Now we got ourselves a tied game, eight apiece. I didn't either. Our cameraman says he didn't see it. Frankly, I didn't either. I'm glad you did. Well, the referee was down low enough in order to see it just cross over that line very briefly. So apparently he's got better eyes than the rest of us here, especially people in the crowd that are sitting right there on the goal line. I apologize, folks. I thought there was a penalty being called, but I'll take the goal any day of the week. We'll see who that goal is credited to. Diaz with it now. We'll wait for the PA announcement, and we'll find out exactly what's going on. I believe that was Charlie Revit. With it now is Fetter. Mercier's goal, scored by number 14, Charlie Revit. Assist to number 20, David Gaines. That's Revit from Gaines. Time of the goal, 642. Gaines has really been racking up the points so far, just two games into the season. Like I said earlier, he's definitely a versatile player that plays a strong physical game and also a very strong offensive game. So he could play both sides of the puck, very good defensive forward. He's extremely fast and has some pretty good stick handling to go with that. He's a very, very good all-around player and hopefully it will be a great bolster to this team in the coming years. With it now is Gramza fighting for the puck. Panthers will dump it in. He tries to get to Fetter. No, he doesn't have it. Lakers will eventually push it out, but that's dumped right back in by Connor. Got an offside call, called all the way down. Panthers uh, refused to clear the zone after all the warnings there, so 
Looks like a face-off right there to the right of Malone. Let's see if the Lakers can create some late last-minute opportunities to catch a lead towards the end of this period. 5.56 remaining in the game. Eight all. It looks like a football score. I assure you this is hockey. Hunt will play it around the boards and eventually goes to Peterson. Peterson can't hold on to it, though, and the Panthers will clear it in. Chasing it is Chris Martin. Odell will take the puck. He bounces it off a, a Panther player inadvertently. That'll go back behind the net. Odell with it. He looks. Peterson right beside him. No, he'll dump it in. Peterson will chase, however. He will eventually get it. Puck trickles to Peterson, who shoots. No, that won't go. There's a delayed penalty call. It's going to the Lakers. It, it's going to the Lakers. Get ourselves a slashing call, possibly in front of the net. Looks like it's Peterson that's going to the box. Definitely got a strong hand on, on the opponent. I didn't see exactly who he got, but he got him pretty good. Peterson obviously upset about that. Tosses his stick while in the bench. He'll get the coolest skates for two minutes. 5-18 remaining in the game. The Lakers down a man once again. Whitney Gibbs will win the faceoff outright. First year's penalty to number 23, Gary Peterson. Two minutes for slashing. Peterson, two minutes for slashing. Time of the penalty, 5-18. The Lakers will keep it out of their zone. With it, Heinel over to number 11, Twiskowski. Instead of playing that high-pressure uh, penalty kill here, they're definitely going to have to play smart. Instead of pressuring, they're going to have to keep it uh, in a box format because if you pressure, you leave more opportunities for them. They could pull off a last-minute win here on the power play. And there'll be a nice butterfly save by, Bla by Williams on Blank, who had a wicked slap shot from behind the blue line. Blank with it again to Wiskowski. He's whistled. There'll be a slashing against the Panthers. Looks like a definite big break here that the Lakers definitely needed to even things out here. Four on four hockey here for the next minute and 17. Very short power play opportunity coming up for the Lakers. Dan Shacklin will get two minutes to think about what he did. There'll be four on four hockey for the next minute, 17 seconds. After that, the Lakers will have a short power play with 4.35 remaining in the game, all tied up at eight. I'm John Baranowski, and with me is David Stearns here at Mercier's College. Central Penn Panthers penalty to number 12, Dan Shackleton, two minutes for slashing. Shackleton, two minutes for slashing. Time of the penalty, 4.35. Leon tries to get it back, but that's Connor with it now. He dances around the play Mercier's player, pushes it in. That went into the crease, but no, that's not gonna be a goal. That was saved by Bobby Williams. It's an impressive save, because even the players didn't think that he made it. Well, Gannon put it right there into his bread basket as he had his glove down on the ice, so he just definitely covered it up. But the thing is, there was too much of a crowd in front of the net. Bobby Connor had some sweet hands there to get himself to the front and almost uncontested, almost had a scoring chance by himself. Spittler will take on Gibbs. No, I'm sorry, that's Warren. With it now is Leon driving, driving. Warren right next to him. Leon will shoot right into the, right into the chest of Malone who will cover the puck with four minutes and six seconds remaining. 47 seconds on the four-on-four four hockey. Oh, Pat Leone there with that shot. It looked like it was bobbled there by Malone for a second, but he grabbed on to hold it on, or hold on to it. You had Warren coming in trailing, of course, on the side there with Leone. If Malone wouldn't have covered it up, Warren would have definitely came in and swept up on the rebound, possibly getting them a goal. Eight all with four minutes remaining in the game here at Mercier's College. Fayot couldn't hold on to the puck. David Carr will get it. He can't keep it in, though. Stefanski looking for it. Two on one coming back here against the Lakers. That was a great save by Bobby Williams on number 10, Teddy Allen. Cannon Carr looks a little aggravated. He's getting a little too physical out there, pushing these guys around. And also, after the last whistle, after Bobby Williams saved, he did give a little extra cheap shot there, but the ref did not clearly see that, considering he was behind the net. Sherrod with it now. He drives up center ice. Over to, who is that? I can't even tell, that's Cordero, yeah. Chris Cordero. He'll make a quick shot, and there'll be a good save by Bobby Williams. Two seconds remaining on the penalty to Mercier Slakers. You're two goals away from making your bet go well. 
Yeah, somebody's got to get two goals here. You think uh, we have enough time here for two goals? Because it's been slowing down quite a bit coming into this uh, later half of the third period. Well, all you need is one goal scored and then one empty netter. And if, and if Warren gets both of those, he'll tie a feat done only by Mario Lemieux. <laughs> scoring so. five goals five different ways. Ah. With it now is Spittler. Fought for by Gramza. I hope you knew that yourself because I kind of found that out for myself on the uh, hockey trivia on Facebook. Yeah, definitely you're a Pens fan. I know you knew that way before coming Shame into this. Shame on you. That happened in 1988 <laughs> against the Devils on New Year's Eve. <laughs> we have Spittler with it now. Punched out. Taken by the other Spittler. And that was a quick shot save by Bobby Williams. Are you suggesting we introduce some uh, NHL trivia here into our broadcast? <laughs> we definitely could. We'll, we'll maybe get a call-in show going here. Yeah, problem is Gary Bettman would probably come after us with a lawsuit like he does with everything. Sorry, Rangers. We had to make a comment. <laughs> Hey, at least our website's still original. Right, New York? <laughs> With it now? We don't need conformity in the NHL. With it now is number 20, David Gaines. He will push it over to Miranda. I think we did a better job today laying off on those jerseys. <laughs> Definitely. Oh! Oh, holy crap! Gary Peterson just water-bottled Malone to put it up 9-8 to eight with 2.34 remaining in the game. Wow, what a nice backhander there. He definitely roofed that one. Beauty knocking the water bottle out, making it look like a fancy goal. With 2.34 left here in the third period, Gary Peterson gets the Lakers the lead. He put a top shelf where mom keeps the cookies. I'm sorry, let me, uh, let me redo that one. From top shelf where mama hides the cookies. Rick Jenneret, folks. Yeah, that was, you need a little work, buddy. Maybe you can learn from his son, Mark Jenneret, who does a calling for the Erie Otters. I don't know what you're talking about. I learned that from NHL 2003. You're talking Jim Houston. Jim, Jim Houston and Don Taylor. <laughs> right on with it, Pat Leone. He goes, his, he has his uh, puck stolen. Wally, now that? taken by Fetter. Bayock looking for Diaz. He won't find it, but he will find Connor, who puts a quick shot right into the pad of Bobby Williams. 9 8 Lakers with 2.20 remaining in the game. Here's the third period of play. We wait for a face-off, and then the PA announcement for the goal. First year's goal scored by number 23, Gary Peterson. Assist to number 18, Pat Shearer. That's Peterson from Shearer. Time of the goal, 2.34. I was holding my breath there. I thought we'd have another goal during the PA announcement. But Pat Leone just couldn't put it in. That seems to be like a growing trend every time that PA announcer talks. Something good happens for the Lakers. It's definitely good luck. All right, with it now are the Panthers scrambling a bit with less than two minutes remaining in the game. With that is Fayok. He looks for an open man. Finds it with Spittler. Devin Spittler shoots. No, that'll go off Chris Martin. Martin loses his stick, picks it right back up. A little bit of fighting going on in the corner. With it now is Odell. He goes over to Revit. Charlie Revit looks for the open man, finds it, and Gaines. Gaines with some open ice. He passes up the middle. Oh, there should have been a penalty against the Panthers as Whitney Gibbs went down hard in the middle, right into the crease. Looked like a desperation hook down. Definitely something that should have been called. Something will be called now is looks like some punches were thrown with gloves on, but I'm not sure on that. 116 remaining in the game. I think we got ourselves a lacrosse score, 9 to 8. Who would have thought we would have seen 17 goals today considering we only saw 10 yesterday? Definitely a high-scoring game by both teams. They kept it very close and extremely interesting hockey. And all this done without tight jerseys, bigger nets, or special rules. Yeah, that's all right. Bigger nets, Roberto Luongo won't even see the ice in the NHL anymore. Warren with a quick shot, but that'll go off a player's stick and up into the air. Warren gets it back eventually. He looks to go to the middle. Connor. Diaz looking. There's Penn Panthers are scrambling right now. They pull their goalie. Look now, Fayok, Azroff. Over to Spittler. Spittler shoots. Chest save by Williams. Diaz with it over to Fayok. Spittler chases the puck into the corner. 36 seconds remaining in the game. Connor with it, behind the net, he looks. He finds Fayok at the point. He shoots, 
Down low, that misses the net. Azaroff chasing. He looks, goes to Bauman. Bauman shoots. Oh, and it will go in. It will go in with 18.5 seconds. The score tied up at nine. Wes Bauman had the laser there, definitely finding enough room to squeeze that thing through and beat Bobby Williams up top in the corner. This game's knotted up at nine. Looks like it's gonna finish that way unless someone surprises us with 18.5 seconds left here. There is no overtime here in, in uh, the ACHA, is there? I'm not exactly sure. It is an exhibition game, so I don't know what league rules are applying here, but I believe it is the ACHA rules. So I think we might end up with a tie here or a five minute overtime. I believe five minute overtimes are ACHA standards. Well, if there's an overtime, we will see you here. If not, we will end this game. 12.7 seconds remaining in the third period of play. It's funny, we're talking about rules. The only rule that they didn't apply here right now in college hockey is the side area of the corners where goalies are restricted from. But they did chop down the crease, but if they bring on those bigger nets in the NHL, will college hockey bring it on? We will find out later on. Hopefully not. Panthers will clear it in for icing. Seven seconds remaining. There will be a face-off in the Panther zone. If I were the Mercyhurst Lakers right now, I would call a timeout. I don't believe Coach Tom McKinnon will do that, though. Wes Bauman, assistant number three, Chris Azroff. That's Wes uh, Bauman from Azroff. Time of the goal, 18 seconds. Lakers will win the faceoff, but Henry cannot hold on to the puck. It will go all the way back into his zone. One second on the clock. And that's where the third period of play will end. Is there an overtime? Yes, I believe Coach McKinnon is signaling over to Coach Bo Perlant that they will do a five-minute overtime. Well, there's a two-minute break. Um, what do you say we stay on the air here? We'll find out in a moment what we're going to do. And we wait. There will be a five-minute overtime, four on four. There's only a two-minute break between the third period and the overtime, so we're just going to stay on the air with you here. And once we get the call from the PA announcement, I suppose, we will discuss the third period of play and figure out exactly what's going on with these Mercyhurst Lakers. Five-minute overtime, followed by the minute 15 seconds left in the air. All right, all knotted up at nine. The Lakers go into the overtime. You're going to be off by one goal on this, but hey, you're pretty close. Well, regardless, it'll either finish 9-9 or 10-9. Well, somebody's walking out of here. Uh, obviously, a winner. I think they're going to play this one out until someone wins. You think so? I think so. I hope so. I think they, go, they do go into a shootout according to ACHA rules. That is one rule that they did adopt from the NHL, having no ties. So I remember last year the Lakers had a extended... <laughs> Uh, overtime bout where I don't remember how many rounds it went, but it was a long shootout ending. I, it was just a mess altogether. Both goaltenders were completely fatigued. I believe that the Mercyhurst Lakers did take that one. I'll have to reference that. And just later. 20 seconds remaining in the intermission. We will find out what's going on just after this. If we have a shootout, we will stick with you on that. I honestly don't think we are going to have a shootout. Somebody's going to put it in. I'm not going to say who. It's going to be a nail biter. Oh, it already is, as the Lakers have come to tie it up. As you can the, tell, all my nails are gone. <laughs> the Lakers were down by three goals twice in this game, have managed to rally back and go ahead. Then the Central Penn Panthers took it back. Deep into Panther zone, Azroff with it now after, after not corralling the faceoff. Azroff passes up to Connor. Connor dumps it in, Lakers chasing. Gramza on Connor hard. Azroff with it, he shoots. No, they'll be far wide as Spittler chases the puck now. With it now is Stefanski. Stefanski looks. Tries to find a man. He eventually will do so in Pat Scherer. Scherer over to Leon. Leon will shoot. Pad save by Malone. Lakers fighting for it. That's Stefanski, but he will lose that battle as Connor takes it up the ice. 
He will dump it in lazily, and the Panthers will get fresh men on the ice. Scherer with the puck behind his own net. Handed off to Leone. Back over to Gramza, who will go to Hunt. Warren on the ice now, too. Coming back two on two, and there will be an offsides called as Robert Diaz was just a little too overzealous. He cut ahead there, and oh boy. Is Cotton that Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe, oh man. But hey, we don't have five minutes. We only have three minutes and 54 seconds. Well, here's hoping that someone will score a goal here. Here's hoping it's the Mercier's Lakers. Maybe it'll be the second round of the uh, shootout then. Could be, you never know. Added on two minutes onto that 350 left. All right, Chris Martin with the puck. He will pass it over to Warren. Warren has his pocket picked by Spittler. Martin with again, over to Warren. Warren dances around the man. Nice spin move there, and he goes behind his net. 3.33 remaining in the overtime period. Stefanski tries to pass it up, but he will miss Warren, and it will go deep into the Panther zone. Icing is waved off. Martin with it, coming around the net. Martin goes to Warren, but he had his stick up. He looks like he was interfered with just a little bit. Chris Martin at the point, dumps it back in. Hunt. Hunt looks, Odell calling for the puck. He won't get it. Gains on the ice, drives towards the net. He can't keep it. Oh, but it's poked out, and there'll be a, a foot race for it between Chris Martin and Robert Diaz. Martin would win that one. Lakers with it now. That's Chris Martin. Gaines calling for it. Gaines will get the puck. Almost forgot it there. And he is hit hard by Connor, but he will stay on his feet. Bauman with it now in the corner. Gaines fighting. Bauman will retain the puck, however. Skates up ice. Looks for an open man. He has Spittler, but he won't go for it. Oh, and he's tripped up. No call. Wow. Definitely got a two-hander there. Definitely looked like uh, Whitney Gibbs was going for a slasher on the chin pads. Took him down hard. Connor's shot was wide. Carr will have it. Gannon Carr pass it around the, in the inboards. They'll be taken by Bauman. Bauman looks. Goes to Connor. Deep behind the net. Henry chasing. But he's rubbed off. Oh, the, oh! Gannon Carr put it into his own net. And this is how the game concludes. 10-9, Panthers win. That's a very, very tough loss for the Mercier's Lakers. As Bobby Williams had that save and went off his own player. Unfortunately, the Lakers will not win this game tonight. However, it was a valiant effort and it's only exhibition play. I'm John Baranowski, with me is David Stearns. We will meet you for the post-game show right after this. Hello and uh, welcome to the post-game show here. I I'm with the winning coach of this afternoon's game, Coach Jeff Beauperlant. And uh, Coach, let me ask you, coming into this game after losing the first game 7-3 to three, and kind of surprising everyone with this kind of a game, winning it in overtime, how did you guys feel and what did you tell your players going into this game this afternoon? Well, we, we just look to, to compete, and that's really our whole theme the whole weekend was to compete with these guys and um, kind of let the chips fall where they may. Uh, we weren't too worried about the results in an exhibition game. Um, we just wanted to play hard and, and work uh, as best we could uh, and compete with these guys. Okay, from what I understand, you guys are 6-0 and right now in league play within, uh, was it the uh, MJHL? Or that's correct. Correct, right. Um, going into your next game, what have you taken from this weekend that you think can apply to these upcoming games uh, to continue on with your season I, I think the guys showed a lot of character today uh, uh, and yesterday you know they they, uh, they worked hard for 60 minutes and obviously a little bit more today uh, we can take that into our season what we looked at is this you know if this is a playoff series or if this is a you know a playoff type of game that was the atmosphere today and yesterday you know you have to we have to play, be there and play for 60 minutes and that's that was the message to them and hopefully we can take that and into our uh, you know important showcase next weekend okay well uh, from all of us here at Mercy Earth and from coach uh, Tom McKinnon we'd like to thank you for coming out for thank you very these much games and, and uh, good luck with your season they were great hosts so thank you very much all right thank you back to you John thanks David I'm John Baranowski I'm here with center Kenny Hunt Kenny you had one goal and three assists today what was going on out there well, you know, uh, we got a lot of pressure on the forecheck, and uh, we were pretty successful in the offensive zone. We just got to take care of things defensively, and, you know, it'll work out. All right, uh, what changed from yesterday? Um, I think, you know, the penalties kept going against us. We kept going. We had, like, uh, I think it was four or five on threes or something like that. I mean, Easily. we got to stay out of the box. 
And, uh, you know, we can't give up 10 goals. 10 goals is too much to, to give up and stay competitive in a game. When we score nine goals, we should win every time. So Exactly. And you, Panthers were very physical out there today. Did that affect you guys? How did that affect you guys? Well, we got spurts where, uh, you know, every four or five minutes we'd come out hard and we'd hit them and cough up the puck and everything. But when they are hitting us and we're kind of flat on our heels, nothing was happening. So, you know, that took us out of the game for, you know, ten minutes at a time or something like that. All right, and after this tough loss, what's the attitude going into the next game against the Hampton Road Whalers? Uh, we got to, you know, go into practice on Monday and, you know, come with, a, you know, hard work ethic and, uh, you know, make sure we check up defensively and, you know, stay out of the box for, uh, for Wednesday. All right, well, thank you very much. Yep, thank Kenny you. Hunt. All right, I'm joined here now with the goalie coach, Tom Kitchen. Tom, as uh, we see here, the adjusted shots, even though we thought it was 57 to 34, is realistically 65 to 28. Uh, you really can't place uh, much blame on the goaltender in this situation. I mean, from my perspective, I thought Bobby had some spectacular saves. And I, let me just get your take on it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, we had some situations where we had volleys of four shots in a row. You know, the one goes in at the end, finally, you can't really blame the goaltender for that. And, uh, you know, 65 shots is enough to, I think, you know, tire out any goaltender also. I mean, that's, that's two games worth of shots in one game. So. What is the attitude going into practice this week? Uh, you guys only have one practice leading up at the Wednesday's exhibition game against the, uh, the Road Whalers. Uh, what exactly are you looking to work on with both goaltenders relating to Faulkner's performance yesterday and Williams' performance today? I wasn't here for, uh, for, for uh, Bubbles' performance yesterday. Uh, I had an, another commitment, but I, I think generally as a team, we need to work on our, our play in uh, the defensive zone and make sure that guys are, are um, playing their position and making sure they're covering what they need to cover, being, accountability for the guys are, uh, being accountable for the guys they're supposed to cover. Um, from a goaltending standpoint, I think, uh, you know, first couple games shake out some of the cobwebs, maybe the jitters and the nerves and stuff. And as you saw tonight, um, you know, Bobby had, had a little rough start but uh, there were some really good shots, and there were some plays that were beyond his control. Um, I think overall, for, for all of our goaltenders, I think we need to focus on, um, you know, recovery and, and making sure that, uh, you know, that we're, we're watching the puck and reacting the entire time as opposed to anticipating everything. Uh, but, I, I mean, you can't fault a goaltender who had you know, 65 shots on goal. Um, even if you left in 20 goals on 65 shots, that's, that's a lot of work. That, that's, that's a lot of rubber. Definitely a tough game for Bobby and uh, the rest of the team as well. Definitely a lot of kinks to work out, but uh, hopefully things will work out well going into Wednesday's game. Coach Tom Kitchen, thank you. I'm John Baranowski here as always with David Stearns. This is the post-game show. You heard from the players and the coaches. David, what are your final thoughts on tonight's game? Well, definitely, like I said before with Coach Kitchen, you can't place all the blame there on the goaltending and defense. I mean, overall, there was a chemistry issue going on with the team, and Coach McKinnon having to rework the lines. It's going to be a lot of work leading up into Wednesday's game especially with one practice in between these games. It's just definitely going to be a lot of work uh, I can see offensively, defensively, and in the goaltending respect, as Kitchen has pointed out at this point. I, I totally agree. It'll be interesting to see this practice coming up. Uh, by this time, the game against the Hampton Roads Whalers would have already been played, whenever you're seeing this. But you can catch the replay of that game Tuesday at 7 p.m. on here on Channel 20. It's the following Tuesday. Uh, it's the following Tuesday. The on the top of my head, but now, following yeah. Tuesday from Thursday's replay of today's game. So tune in next week. All right. I guess that wraps things up. Guess I'm so. John Baranowski with David Stearns.